Hello, dear. <laughs> Good morning to you, good afternoon to you, and good evening to you from wherever you are joining us uh, tonight. It is Mayegun Live. Joining this broadcast, please read the caption of it. Read the description as well. Hear it. To invite your friends and your not so friendly friends and tell them that my good today. Facebook. And yes, like the country is uh, so, I mean, APC, Egbekegbe have managed to keep Nigeria and Nigerians so confused that even the president or supposed the leadership of uh, over 14 million workers are lost. The minimum craze, the minimum wage, or the maximum shege was supposed to uh, be determined today, but there is but. The uh, tripartite committee put together by Tifnumbu, led by supposed Georgia Kumen. They have come up with their final offer. 62,000. You need to hear that offer the states. Thank you. So uh, thanks so much for joining me uh, tonight. And uh, it is Mayegu live so a week ago the uh, leadership of uh, the nigerian workers they said they've had enough enough of uh, back and forth uh, you know back and forth uh, <clears throat> negotiation that was leading to nowhere while uh, the cost of a living crisis continued to eat up uh, the people or the workers themselves so they said their final uh, request on the table will be 494,000 Naira. And there's, there's been so many debates on that since. However, if Numbu's government offered them 60,000 Naira, which is practically $40. Okay, or oh, yeah, I think, uh, is it 40 or $38? Okay, so they rejected that. Okay, and then... Uh, they declared a nationwide strike. National grid shut down. Water supply, electricity supply to the National Assembly, government agencies, and you know, buildings shut down. That actually rattled them because it seemed for the first time in a long time, that was an actual strike. Airports shut down. People couldn't fly in, they couldn't fly out. Anyway, within a few hours into it, they called the leadership of the 
labor again. Okay, come, let's talk. And when they came out of that meeting, they said they were relaxing the strike for a week because Tipnumbu offered them. Tipnumbu said, guys told them they will add something to the 60,000. So let everybody go back to work for now. Anyway, like I said, so many debates on it. So last, last, it can't be like, say, the Nigerian workers are class as uh, beggars, sort of. So the above 60,000 that Tipnumbu promised them ended up being an additional urgent 2K. And you know that urgent 2K in Nigeria, it's uh, the, what do you call the middle class level of begging? Uh -huh. When you say, like, I have you see urgent 2K for your hand. At a point, it was so raining until, the, until uh, that format cast in Nigeria or casted in Nigeria. Usually people were just on social media. Can I see urgent 2K, urgent 2K? So a day, some of them were making like 20,000, 30,000. And they are making more money than those who actually were working. So that's exactly what I believe the idea of above 60,000 of Tipnumbu came to be urgent 2K. So the final offer, 62,000 Naira, 108% increase from the 30,000 Naira minimum wage. Of course, the worker said, nobody has kind of offered them that. They are waiting for when they will officially offer them that. But in the process, they too came down. They were like, okay, if inflation in Nigeria is over 400%, minimum wage should be similar to it as the inflation has gotten to, uh, you know, a moderate level. Anyway, they came down to 250,000 Naira. La Febu, that's what the majority of uh, those who have said something negative about that, well, that's what they have said. Oh, that's La Febu. If the government of Nigeria or the federal government offers 250,000, what do you think the states can offer? The states in Nigeria right now that are completely like 90% of states in Nigeria right now is close to bankruptcy. If they don't give them money from Abuja in a month, or what they give them from Abuja in a month is short. Eh? Even those who have who are government workers in those states, they will start begging. Some are already begging. They are working, though, but they are begging to survive. Kind of. Even though they are still thinking of creating more states, right? Instead of fusing together some of these uh, politically created, uh, you know, settlements that they call states, not viable at all. Okay, so these states, some of them barely, barely able to pay the thirty thousand naira minimum wage. So to them, this is a joke. And listen, if uh, now. Because it is now about the people, right? So the state governments or the state governors are now saying, this is a, a federal system of governments. The federal government can decide the, how much they will pay. They will pay their own workers. We will decide how much we will pay. That is the meaning of federal system of governments. Like, oh, Nigeria is now a federal system of governments. Okay, interesting. Okay, so some of the states, uh, currently, let me tell you what they are offering by each state before we continue on uh, NLC's uh, silence for now. But before I do that, today is, well, yesterday was the deadline of uh, the agreement to suspend, you know, to relax the, the strike. However, they gave them an extra 24 hours. So today they started putting out some little little snippet of the propaganda to come. Okay. However, uh, two days ago, the state governors they met over this. Okay. Apart from Lagos, Edo, Rivers, 
you know, that have offering above 70,000 Naira minimum wage, right? The rest of 30, 30, 32 states in Nigeria. Okay, let's take them one by one, just for the sake of this chat. Abia State is offering 40,000 Naira minimum wage. Alex Soti, Adamawa is offering 45,000. Akwa Ibo is offering 65,000. That is above the Fnumbu's offer. Uh, Bauchi is offering 40. Bayelsa is offering 65. Benue is 48,000. Borono is offering 70. Yeah, Borono too. This is Borono State that is paying 7,800 Naira salary to teachers in Borono State. Anyway, they say they will pay 70,000 this time. Cross River is offering 65,000 Naira. Delta is offering 68,000. Ebony is offering 40,000. Edo, 70,000. Ekiti is offering 55,000. Uh, Enugu is offering 43,000. Gombe, 45,000. Imo, 57,000. Jigawa, 40,000. And then you have Kaduna, is offering 45,000 Naira. Kano is offering 50,000. Casina is offering 45,000. Kebi is offering 40,000. Kogi is offering 35,000. Kuara is offering 43,000. Lagos is offering 75,000. Nasarawa is offering 40. Ninja is offering 45. Ogun is offering 65. Ondo is offering 62. Oshun is offering 57. <laughs> Oyo is offering 60. Plateau is offering 65. Rivers is offering 80,000. Shokoto is offering 40,000. Taraba, 45. Yobe, 42. And finally, Zamfara, 30,000 Naira. They are not offering anything bigger than 30,000 Naira. So the question now is, the NLC and the TUC who have said even if they offer them 100,000, I mean, 100,000 Naira, they will not take it. Uh, their president, Adjero, is currently in Geneva, Switzerland, by the way, for the ILO conference. Yeah, International Labor Organizations, ILO. So, which means, as uh, the tripartite committee of Petit Numbu have come out to say, yeah, that's the most we can offer, 62,000 Naira, take it or leave it. If we offer you any penny above that, then we would have to sack people. So the Tif Numbu's guys, they are calling the NLC terrorists. Now what NLC is doing is an act of terrorism. And then the NLC responded that, no, you are the terrorist in Agbada. So now those exchanges, I would believe also that I would expect the NLC and all of them to actually be 
in a marathon of uh, meetings. What are we going to do? Well, because if they are presenting this uh, 62,000, as we know, that's what they are presenting. What are we going to do? Are we going to go on strike? Or are we just going to maybe just take it? Kind of, right? But when you ask them, they will be like, eh, we are also kind of still waiting. So those workers, I mean, those Nigerians, Nigerian workers who are feeling the brunt of uh, these economic policies of uh, Tifnumbu and their gang. I don't know what your expectations are. Okay. You are not going to get 100,000. So what are you going to do? So instead of them being in a marathon, like 48 hours marathon meetings, a beer, a big showdown where some people are saying, NLC, no grill, NLC, no grief for them, or you must remain this or that, oh, Baba. The same NLC leadership is currently in Geneva. They are waiting for the news. And what did they say? They are saying that they don't believe everything that they are reading. That they still believe that Etifnubu is a father. And that Etifnubu is not going to... Eh? Like Etifnubu will have his own offer. They see all these 62,000, these 60,000, all these things. Eh? If uh, the Nigerian government, starting with the federal, if they can purge the uh, the workers uh, verification or something like that, or workers uh, register, and purge it of uh, the ghost workers. I mean, if they tell you that Nigerian workers, Nigerian uh, federal government workers are, for example, if they say they are two million, you can be rest assured that, Baba, this is how ridiculous. So you can be rest assured that uh, thirty percent of that are ghost workers. These are workers that are either not existing or they exist, but they are either not living in Nigeria anymore, but they are still collecting salaries, drawing salaries, getting promotions, and all of them, they are not there anymore. They are not doing the job. Ghost workers. You probably will pick about uh, 400,000 ghost workers or 500,000 ghost workers from that 2 million. And that's part of uh, the wage bill. Every administration will do workers' verification. Wala Gushele, this, that. At the end of the day, the real workers will be sacked. And ghost workers will remain. And the wage bill will continue to go high. Kind of. Now, if you go to all the states in Nigeria too, it is the same. If you go to, let me give you an example, Ogun states. So the population of Ogu State is reported to be about uh, the same as that of uh, Scotland, okay? 4.5 million. And some said 5, 5 million. Anyway, inside that 5 million uh, population, real or fake, there is uh, a wage bill. The last time I checked, there was a wage bill of over 2 billion naira every month paid to over... 300,000 workers. And those are just the state government workers, so not local government. So when you add the local government uh, workers, you'll be looking at about 500,000 wage bill. But guess what? Half of that, or maybe one third of that as well, is filled with ghost workers. People who are drawing salaries. Salaries that are going to private pockets, not to any real worker. So they said, okay, if you cut down this uh, bazaar, you know, this, this extravagant lifestyles that you are kind of building for yourselves, right? And funding. If you cut that by half, eh? and then uh, you possibly stream the real ghost workers out of the workforce, right? You may be saving yourself a fortune. And indeed, you will be able to afford to pay the 250000 naira minimum wage. All of these are just like the common talk everywhere. Why don't you stop buying cars? Why don't you stop building houses? 
Why didn't you stop traveling abroad? If you can be traveling abroad, then you can pay us the money. But nobody has really tried to stop them. You know, you know that movie? Catch me if, I mean, catch me if you can. That's exactly what I think uh, the Nigerian uh, criminal politicians are really like. Stop us if you can. If you can't stop us, then shut up. We will do what we will do. So you have to try and stop us. If you can't stop us, then damn you, kind of. So the workers are saying they can afford it. And they are saying, no, we can't. You're wrong, we can't. And indeed they can't with this lifestyle, they can't. The economic policies, the borrowing, you know that under Tifnumbu in one year, it has been established that Tifnumbu's uh, regime, it has borrowed over 24 trillion naira. Do you know that? In one year. Do you? Well, that is what uh, Tifnumbu's government reports as investments. Investment surplus. They are even declaring surplus. They said Tifnumbu's government gained over 6 trillion naira, naira investment money. Abana Lono now borrowed money, now borrowed money. And borrowed money means sorrowed economy. You will have to sorrow for it. So what's the point? Eh? The money is devalued, the money is valueless, and every now and then, the cost of living continues to strangulate you. The Tifnumbu's government that want to pay you 32,000 naira extra eh? is the same Tifnumbu's government that has increased. Your electricity tariff, Baba, the price of food increased, the price of uh, uh, oil increased, the price of electricity that you won't even have increased. So by the time you try to put them side by side, you can easily see the Robin Hood, Robin Peter to pay Paul, kind of. You know, it's a shame, isn't it? So the NLC are saying that whatever you are hearing, whatever you are hearing about uh, this 62,000, just consider it as a joke. They trust that Tifnubu will do them better. And even if Tifnubu offer them 100,000 Naira, they won't take it. So the next the question now is, who is going to tell them? Yesterday, I shared with us uh, Pastor, I mean, sorry, Reverend Umbaka, the Father Umbaka. Yeah, Umbaka. Then uh, I have another one for you on this matter. A lot of people are worried because it is not just a Tifnumbu that is negotiating here. There are other horrible, horrible offers that are more or less like almost 80% of Nigerian workers, Nigerians, have been subjected to a slavish, a slavish environment, a slavish society. And it is so coordinated that the people themselves seem so powerless. Right? But nobody is going to do it for you. Nobody is going to stop them. You would have to stop them. Listen to this from another, another preaching from the pulpit. I have been sick of this problem. I have been sick of this controversy over living wage or minimum wage. And I believe that something is seriously wrong with the heads of many of our leaders. How can anyone who earns 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, 500,000, not to talk of people who earn 1 million, 2 million, how can they go to sleep in good conscience? Every day. How can they go to sleep in good conscience and come out to sit down in a boardroom to discuss the sustainability or otherwise of paying 60000 to the poorest of workers? How can we go to bed and sleep, all those who belong to the elite, who earn two, three, four, five hundred thousand, one million? How can you go to sleep in good conscience, I say, if you still have any conscience? How can you go to sleep in good conscience and come out to be debating? I hear people on TV. I watch people on TV. Experts, economic experts, 
corporate executives, government officials, who are taking home more than a million in a month. And they are there arguing that 60,000 or over will destroy the economy. It's not sustainable. How wicked! You give 60,000 to a poor worker for his, a poor worker who may have a family of two or three or four for his feeding, for his accommodation, for his house rent, for his medical care, for his children's school fees. How wicked! How 